Hey everybody, it is Kerry, and I am out here in Jay, Oklahoma for the first ever Overland of America event. There's a bunch of vendors here. There's classes. I'm teaching some of those classes. There's some fantastic presenters who are doing video premieres here, such as Caleb Baker from Baker Overland, uh, Tyler from Independence Overland. You got Matt and Kara from Ozark Overland Adventures. Uh, it's just a great event. There was a pool party. There's uh, raffles, there's drawings, there's giveaways, there's all kinds of things going on here. And there's a bunch of trails right here, right in this venue. This is 1,600 acres. So it is going to be a great event. We're looking forward to seeing it all. And I'm cruising around in style on this Quiet Cat uh, Lynx e-bike. This is so much fun. And it's helping me get around this venue so easily. Uh, big shout out to Quiet Cat for loaning this to me for the weekend. Super appreciate it. So let's go and check out Overland of America. Well, we are over here at 4x4 Colorado with our buddy Blaine, and you announced a, a new tent recently. Yes, sir. That I think is one of the coolest things out there if you're trying to save weight. Absolutely, Kerry. What do we have? So behind me, we have our Atmos Air. This is our newest tent uh, to our lineup. This is a tent that's made of a complete airframe structure. So it allows you to have a large sleeping space at an incredibly lightweight. So this tent only weighs 118 pounds. Ooh. It is uh, got about five feet of clearance height wise. So easy to get changed in there. On the inside, you've got these pretty rigid uh, airframes all the way around. And they're pretty rigid as far as um, being uh, puncture proof. I haven't found a, a way to puncture these yet. I'm sure you could take a knife to it if you wanted to, something like that. Okay, we but got LED notice, lights all the way around. You'll notice up top, we have LED lights that circle the entire ceiling. You'll notice that we have one of the blinds closed up top. We have one of the blinds open. So you'll see that gray fabric back there. So that actually allows you to see through the skylight and you can go ahead and pull it like you see right here to cover the entire skylight as well. You'll notice uh, some of our most standard features to our tent, like our diesel heater port down That's below, nice. which is really, really nice. Um, obviously you've got your LED light, like we mentioned, but we did add something new. Uh, you can adjust your, um, your light setting from a dimmer to brighter setting uh, five different times with that switch. And then we've got a couple other nice features on the outside. So. One thing you'll notice here is you've got an input 12 volt DC little slot, so you can port power right in through the tent if you wanted to. Um, but what really what makes this tent cool is how fast it breaks down and how fast it sets up, especially given the weight and the style of tent it is. So what I'm gonna do for you guys, I'm gonna show you how quick it deflates. So the longest part of deflating this tent is actually gonna be taking out these rain fly rods. Ugh. And I think a lot of people don't consider weight when they're putting something on top of their Jeep or their truck and, and how and top heavy you can get. That's exactly right. And, and really the reason to bring this to market is we, we had that concern with our full aluminum body tents where folks would say, well, you know, 230 pounds or 270 pounds, that's a lot on top of my Subaru Crosstrek. Well, here we go, 118 yeah. pounds. You can put this on anything from a two-door Jeep, Subaru Crosstrek, you can put it on your 4Runner, whatever you like. But yeah, let me finish this up for you really quick. So you'll now know- Now these rain flies are integrated. They're not uh, a separate piece correct. that you have to yeah, add to it. It's completely integrated. Uh, you got tie downs for everything up at the top as well. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna open up this exhaust valve flap here. You'll notice your plastic exhaust valve. So this will be something similar to uh, like an inflatable kayak system, canoe, something like that. But why don't you step back just a second. So very, we're done. <laughs> very quick, seriously, and then we're done. So then what we'll do is we'll just kind of push the fabric in towards the middle. You'll notice along the side of the tent here, if you take a peek right here, there's a sliding channel. So this channel actually will slide and give you some extra structural integrity of your platform. So we'll go ahead and put that back into place. You'll hear it click and lock. And then 
if we uh, we're going to close it up, which we won't do right now because we'll blow it back up for you guys. We'll close those sliding shock or um, the sliding channels to the lock position and the store position. We'll flip in the platform, and then you have three straps along the side here that will help cinch everything down. And then you'll notice right underneath, we have a soft canvas cover that actually covers up the tent. Okay, so fold it. This is like the hinge point. Right this is about the hinge here. point, yep. So it's gonna fold over this way. That's right, yep. And then I'm gonna show you exactly how we inflate so, it, so. In the stowed position, what are the dimensions we're looking at? Yeah, so close, you're looking at 58 inches long. You're looking at 38 inches wide, so very narrow. And then you're looking at 13 inches high with that soft canvas cover once, it's, once it's buttoned up. That's um, a tiny profile. When it's opened up, you have 79 inches in length, 52 inches in, in width, and then 57 inches in height. So quite a, quite a large space on the inside as well for the amount of weight it is and the sheer size of it. So now you take a up. bunch of deep breaths and you blow it up. It, that's exactly right. So I do recommend not being at elevation. Yeah. We, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna close this valve here. Then- now, That does look like a, that standard type fitting that we see on paddle boards uh, yep, and stuff. It is. So if you needed to, if the pump didn't work, you could use a, the you hand You could, pump. and actually, since you mentioned the pump, let me show you something really quick. So right here, tied into the airframe structure is our air compressor. You'll notice a zipper around there. So if this ever does fail, we offer a five-year warranty on the compressor, same oh, as the nice. tent. So we can actually remove the entire compressor, put a new compressor in there. We are working on a system because all of our lightweight tents will come with our air foam mattress standards. So the mattress you see here won't actually come with this tent. We are working on a system where you'll be able to blow up the air foam mattress with the same compressor. Oh, nice. So by the time that this hits the market in January, you will have that capability. But anyways, so you'll see how the uh, 12 volt cord runs to the compressor, runs out through this pocket. So you've got two different options. We've got one that'll connect here and it's 15 feet long. You can bring it down to your cigarette lighter on your, uh, on your vehicle, or if you have a power station like a Jackery or something with similar. With a DC 15 port? With a, yep. Uh, I'm just plugging it into a 12 volt three amp right here. And then it's as easy as connecting that. You hear the beep, and then the pump will actually auto shut off at the uh, correct pressure as well. Oh, nice, so yeah. it's uh, set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. So it's about three minutes. Um, so if you'd like, you're welcome to watch it blow up. It will take us about three minutes. Every once in a while, when it's closed, it might fold in a spot that needs a little little tap so that it can get fully erect. But otherwise, it's a really neat tent, very, very lightweight, and a perfect solution for those lighter utility vehicles. Now, what are we looking at pricing? $2,000 will be our MSRP on it once they are stocked in, uh, in Denver and ready to ship out. Right now we're doing a pre-sale at $1,700 a unit. So oh. really, really good price there. And then for Black Friday coming up, uh, we will be launching a sale at $1,500 for the pre-sale. And again, first round will ship out January 1 for these tents. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to something like this when you know we don't wanna take the Jeep because it's not a difficult trail. We wanna take our Subaru Outback, yep. something like this, or on those trails where we can't take our trailer, like the Rubicon, 100%. something like that, where we need to have it on top of the Jeep, but we don't want all that extra top heavy weight. Something like this is absolutely ideal. It, it is perfect. And really, if you have those uh, more technical trails that you're planning, say you got that, that big trip where you're nervous about that center of gravity, 100 pounds. It is the perfect solution when you have that weight conscious uh, mindset when it comes to your vehicle. Which, so. if you don't consider that in your build, you should. <laughs> yep, the higher absolutely. you go, the more weight you put up, you can get a little tippy. So. And as you see in the background, it's it's doing its thing. Um, so it's probably only been a minute or two so far. That's nice. It feels so rigid when it's all inflated. Uh, it's it's surprising how stiff these things. Do you know oh, what kind of PSI it goes into uh, these? I don't know the exact PSI off the top of my head. I will say we have had these tents in 30, 40 mile power winds, and you would think they would start shaking around like crazy. No, you might get a little flutter, but nothing that the frame is ever gonna fall on top of you or anything like that. Uh, the way the system is built and so the, the airframe structure is sewn, it's... Uh, well, and these things, they're... 
as you saw, these things are super beefy yep. and they get so rigid. Yep. It, it is a very secure feeling tent. And I think over the next couple of years, we're going to see a lot of the hard frame structured tents kind of focus towards an airframe structure because it's going to be able to reduce that weight so much. And if you have that integrity that you need from your structure, uh, what's the need for the extra weight, right? Yeah. So like I was saying, every once in a, a while. A, an extra minute maybe of setup time for it to inflate versus some of the other rooftop tents that they have that you can get up and running in a minute and a half or yep. so. Yeah, uh, and so it's you not know, that big of a deal. Plugging it into your power source when you get to camp, you know, while you're doing your other things, even if you forget about it, it's gonna auto set, uh, auto shut off at the correct pressure. Um, that is, I, that's an awesome feature. Yeah, I mean, so it's uh, it, it is coming together so nicely. Oh, plenty of room inside. Oh, so, see, little little tap and yep, uh, just a little love goes. tap every once in a while. Depending on how you fold it, you could fold one of the frame pieces where it just needs a little little help there. I and mean, I'm sure there's not a lot of psi in there, but man, that is so yeah. freaking rigid. It, it feels like one of those uh, hard foam um, paddle boards that it, it, like exactly. That. I mean, and you can kind of tell that that's that's the thought process that goes into some of the engineering using that same system. You know, if you can trust yourself in the middle of a lake in an inflatable kayak or an inflatable paddle board, why can't you have an inflatable rooftop tent? Yeah, oh, and save I, all of that weight. Makes a lot weight. of sense. This is super cool. And then we'll just go ahead. We'll just disconnect that, and then you've got your tent structure. And then until you're ready to uh, uh, air down, I mean, you just just keep that valve sealed. There is a valve up here, which is very clearly indicated. Don't touch this valve. You never will ever <laughs> touch this valve. Um, but otherwise, Why? it's a pretty innovative product. Why would I product. not touch that valve? Because uh, it, it says so? One, because it says so, it, but it will, uh, it'll mess up the airframe structure where it won't fill properly. Okay, yeah. excellent. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be lightweight without really compromising on size, yep. this is a great size, the way it folds out to the side. You got plenty of room for two people and a dog. And, hey, on, this, uh, <laughs> and on, on this platform, you know, you got a 600 pound load capacity without the ladder. So this, the integrity of the, of the build is really great. If you are looking for something lightweight at a really good price point while not sacrificing on the quality of the build, this is a great option for you. All right, awesome. Good to see you, Blaine. Carrie, okay, such a pleasure. Awesome, awesome product. Thank Looking you. forward to some of the new stuff you've got coming out. Where should they find you? 4x4colorado.com. You can also find us on Instagram at 4x4.colorado or in Lakewood, Colorado. Come on into our showroom. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Thanks much, man. Thanks Appreciate so much, it. Thanks, See ya. Uh, something a lot of people either don't think about or you know a second thought or that sometimes you just don't know what to do is security right. when you're out you're overlanding and a firearm is not always the best choice right so we have an interesting product here that kind of is the best of both worlds in some respects right what do we have yeah so today we have with us it's a burner it's a less lethal firearm option is what it is it fires with so you'll people. kill less people <laughs> you're less likely to kill any people <laughs> well yeah i like the way you think about that that's awesome um it shoots a hard projectile just here mm -hmm. it can also shoot a pepper powder or a pepper powder with a tear gas in it both of these will take a grown man down to his knees for about 40 minutes and allow you to get out of harm's way without killing anybody. You bring up a good point. It is powered by CO2. And Berna has patented a process they call pull and pierce technology. And what does that mean? What it means is, you, this is your magazine. You put your rounds right in here. On the end of the magazine is a tool, an Allen wrench, if you will. You use this tool to open this end here. You just twirl it around. The little end pops out, and you insert your you insert your CO2. 
when you put this cap back on, it does not pierce the CO2. Now that's important because some other CO2 type uh, powered uh, weapons, if you will, as soon as they pierce that, you can have leakage. Absolutely. And you go to use it and it's empty. Absolutely. So that is that can definitely be a problem. The fact that this is gonna sit there for as long as you want and be ready to fire that first time, I think that's huge. That is huge. It's a game changer, really. Um, and although the CO2 cartridge is good for 17 to 20 rounds, I don't care if you take one round or 12 rounds, when you're done practicing or demonstrating for someone... Or taking you, someone down. Or taking someone down. In the case <laughs> of one round, you're exactly right. You throw this away. Two dollars. Okay. Your life is worth two dollars. You throw this one away, you put a new one and in. And again, that's because you don't want one sitting in there that has the potential to leak and not work when you need it to. Absolutely. So. You are exactly right. Excellent. So some of the other differences from an actual firearm, so we consider this a launcher or a gun as opposed to a firearm, you don't need to rack it. So that's really helpful for someone like myself. Sometimes people aren't strong enough to rack it or in a high pressure situation remembering that you have to rack it. It's ready to go. The only thing I need to remember is to change it from safe to fire, and then I'm ready to shoot. Um, it has zero recoil. Not, not a little recoil, zero. zero recoil. Zero recoil. You're exactly, not even a little. And it sounds like a balloon popping, so you don't need hearing protection. You don't need to be concerned with blowing out your eardrums. Um, the hard projectile will not pierce your skin, nor will it go through a wall. So great for home protection and having to worry about a husband, a wife, small children, or an apartment, or in an RV, right? It's not going to go through the walls. That's, that's huge. I mean, that's something a lot of people don't think of when they want to start carrying a sidearm is that thing is going to keep going somewhere, yeah. you know, and it may go through a wall. It may go into another room. Someone could be in there. Uh, a lot of stuff to think about when it comes to an actual firearm. The fact that this isn't going to penetrate anything is pretty big. But that being said, how well is that going to stop somebody? Is that going to really hurt or? Yeah, it is actually going to really hurt. We have two models with us here today. This is an LE. So I want you to think law enforcement. It's the more powerful of the two. I see the cartridges are a little bit bigger. Yeah. Correct, they're 12 ounces versus nine. So this shoots at 330 feet per second, while the SD, and I want you to think more popular, it shoots at 280 feet per second. With the hard projectile, either of them are gonna get the job done, as well as with the pepper or the powder. It's just this one's a little bit more powerful. But why would you use the kinetic projectiles over the pepper? Um, so for home defense, on the nightstand, I would use the hard projectile. I would prefer not to shoot pepper in the house. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to so, pepper yourself if someone's right. too close. On my everyday carry, um, I have it loaded with the first two projectiles that will come out would be hard projectile, and the next three are pepper. And the reason being is if we were to get into an altercation right now, we are far too close for me to shoot pepper. Because I'm you're going to get go hit down. yourself. We're both going to go down. So instead, I'm going to take a shot and I'm going to do what I can to back up to get out of harm's way and put distance between us. Because I know my third shot, if I haven't stopped you with the first two, I may have missed you with the first two because now I'm in a high pressure situation. If I hit you, it's probably the end. You're going one way, I'm going another way. But if I missed you or you keep coming, I know my third, fourth, and fifth shot are pepper. So the magazine works. holds five. It holds five. Now, if you doubt the effectiveness of these pepper projectiles, there are some other videos that I've seen online of some pretty big guys going to their freaking knees. It is, it works extremely well. You are exactly right. Now, for practice someone wants to go out and practice you're not you don't want to burn up pepper projectiles or um, you have the kinetic ones but what else can someone do for yeah that's a good question to get used to it so the first thing is your actual round itself um, these are reusable so I would always suggest that you buy more than just what comes in the kit. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But you can shoot them into a trap. We have one hanging up here in the back. Um, you can shoot them in the backyard and have the kids go pick them up. These are reusable. Now, if you shoot a perpetrator, probably don't ask them to step aside. So hey, can I have that back, please, so I can shoot you again? Right. Probably don't want to do that. <laughs> in the kit, however, it also comes with um, 
These are biodegradable, biodegradable eco-friendly rounds that you can shoot in the backyard and not worry about having to pick them up. Additionally, this is a practice round as well. There's five of them in here, and this is super important because what this does, it demonstrates how the pepper works. So it shows you the cloud. So it's got a white inert powder in it. So when you shoot it, you do need to hit something or somebody for this to explode, but you'll be able to see and get an idea of how you would want to aim. Ideally you would hit- Oh, nice. Yeah, ideally you would hit the person, but if I missed you twice, I might want to now look for, is there a wall, is there a car, is there a tree, is there a bigger object that I could hit that's close to you that would, the powder would, um, would dis So would to see disperse. how it's going to disperse and yeah, I, I get it. That's great. Yeah. So in a, a basic kit, you don't have the pepper, Correct. right? That's going to be sold separately. Yes. And other accessories someone might want would be a holster. Yes, we have holsters. Um, and when somebody's buying for the first time, we, we suggest to go along with the kit. Again, you get extra rounds because with your own gun, it's only as good as you have ammunition for it, right? Um, we suggest that you get the um, extra CO2 cartridges. They're $2 a piece. Remember we said the way that Pearson, a pull and pierce works, you want to have a new one in there all the time. So we suggest that you get that. We also suggest that you choose one or or one or the other, and you might choose both the pepper or the pepper and the tear gas. Um, we do have holsters. They do fit possibly a holster that you may already have. It's very possible, but we do have Berna holsters here as well. And it looks like it's a standard Picatinny rail on the bottom. Yes, So, correct. you know, if you want to add a light or something, yes. it's just going to pop right on there. Now, one thing I don't think we've said yet is the fact that it's legal in 50 states. Oh, important point, yes. yes. And not, N not excluding California, right? right so, not excluding California. So all 50 states, it's legal. Right. Some municipalities have regulations on the max, which is the pepper and the tear gas. So there are a few municipalities that will restrict us shipping to location. Okay. Yeah. And what else should someone know about getting started with one of these? Like how, how is it to fire? How to, you know, what's right. it like? What's the experience like for somebody? Right. So <laughs> this is a twofold question, really. If I have somebody who is a shooter, somebody who shoot is a shooter, okay. somebody who shoots a regular firearm, um, they're going to want to shoot it because it's going to take them a minute to recognize when I said there's no recoil, that there's no recoil. So it will take a minute to get used to that. Right? And it, it's a longer trigger pull, right? A little bit of a longer trigger pull. Um, and it sounds like a balloon popping. So you'd want to practice to become comfortable with it. With somebody who doesn't shoot at all, they will be pleased to find out that there is no recoil. It sounds like a balloon popping. And they won't know really necessarily the difference on the, the longer pull. Right. So um, what I do suggest is that people practice. Again, we have traps. You can you know set up your own, whatever it is you want to do with it. You'd want to become familiar with it and comfortable with it. Um, it is so easy to use. I don't think you need to pull it out every month and practice, but you might choose to do that. Right. Um, the other thing is there's really no maintenance from cleaning the gun. Oh, um, <laughs> every time we go to the range, it's hours of cleaning everything right. afterwards. Right. When you, if you were to purchase a box of the um, CO2, there is an oil in there. So it does provide some instruction that you would want to run the oil through the CO2 piece. Yeah, yeah every now and again. And what are we looking at in terms of price? Yes, so we ha again, we have the LE and the SD. The kit as it stands comes with the launcher itself. Two magazines, five rounds a piece. Five rounds of the actual rounds, ammunition if you will. And we talked about the two different types of practice rounds and two CO2 cartridges. The LE um, is $4.79. The SD comes with the same items and it's $379. So there's a $100 difference. We've put a um, O-Lite on, on this particular one. It's another $150. It could go on either of these guns or you don't need to have it. Uh, where's the best place to, to find these online? Online at overwater-overland.com. Excellent. That's our store. Great. I am definitely picking one of these up for Katarina. She is just not comfortable with the firearms. And I think a less lethal option is, is a great idea. I, I definitely don't ever want to have to shoot somebody. Right. And 
but those situations can come up where you want to get someone to stop what they're doing. And I think this is a fantastic option. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're visiting our friends over at Devos Lighting. You know I have the, uh, the 1200, absolutely love this for camping. Keeps a nice charge, has the filters on it. The, I love the red filter, keeping those bugs away. Absolutely. Absolutely phenomenal. But they have something new that we want to look at, and that's the 2000. That's right, you got it. This is our new Light Ranger 2000. So instead of the filter covers like you've got, we just built them in. So white, this will light up about an 80 foot area. Amber helps with the bugs. And then red as well. Your favorite red just built oh, right in. That is awesome. And with the white, you're getting 2000 lumens versus 1200 lumens. So you got more output. But something that I saw last night that blew me away with this thing is the app. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That is so cool. With the, the 1200, you can turn it on, have all four, you hit it again, you get three, then down to two, but it goes around the circle or the square. Yep. With this one, you can say, I want the front and back, or you individually turn on and off the different sides. I think yeah. that is super cool. So you can design your lighting the way you want. Absolutely. I mean, that was the thing is so many people were like, we want a remote, we want a remote, and we get it. You know, it's like you're sitting in camp, you want to turn it on, you want to turn it off. We were like a remote, like that's kind of gimmicky. You could lose it, you know, something could happen with it. And so we finally bit the bullet and we said, you know what, phone's the way to go. So this is Bluetooth enabled. It just pairs up with your phone. And then, like you said, you can kind of customize your lighting setting around camp. And it's funny, a lot of people will say, that's kind of overkill. But, you know, especially if you're in a dark sky park down in Texas or New Mexico or wherever it is, like amber dimmed all the way down. If you're in a campground and you're worried about your neighbors in the back, you can just select which sides are on and then it just makes it so much easier to you know, not have too much light at camp. Now, I, I mentioned the bug issue with the red filter, but another big benefit of the red is your night vision. Absolutely, yep. So if you're using a red light, you walk away from it, you still have your night vision. You know, you wanna go to the bathroom or something, you can still see at night. Yep. And that is a huge, huge benefit of the red. So I, it's one of the things I really like about it. I, I think I only use the red. I keep the red filter on it all the time. Yeah, yeah. But to have the option and be able to switch it without pulling these filters out, I think is huge. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you have a, a, a bigger stand for it, right? We do, yep. So we upgraded the tripod. Those of you who are familiar with the product, um, it's just a pretty basic kind of C-stand style. These are common and you know, just any tripod you can find. What we did on the 2000 is we re-engineered it. So we got rid of the support struts on the bottom and we spring loaded the legs. So if you're on a hillside or uneven terrain, you can adjust how far out the legs are. Nice. We also built the stakes right into it as well. So oh. they just slide right into the foot here, but then you can peg it down. So if you're worried about wind or you have a solar panel up top or something, you can just Stake it now, right into is the, the 2000 compatible with the other accessories like the motion detector and uh, the solar panel? It is. Yep. So the 2000 works with all of our accessories, works with the solar panel, works with the motion sensor, works with the battery bank. Everything in that Light Ranger ecosystem works with the 2000 as well. Excellent. So here's an example of the solar panel on top. Very nice. Just pops right on. Yep. Plug it into the USB on there and you're, you're good to go. And these are USB-C. Correct. Unlike a lot of other products out there, <laughs> they are actually modern. <laughs> Everything we have is USB-C now. Well, what are we looking at in, in price? For the, let's talk about the 1200 and the, the 2000. Yeah, definitely. So show special, 225 it shows online, it's 249. We've had such a hard time keeping this thing in stock that we're not gonna be doing any promotions with the 2000 right away. Price-wise for the 1200, 143 with the show special, and, and it's one, uh, um, 159.99 online. Okay. Now, it, it seems, at first, you think, that's a little pricey for a light. Yep. yep. But 
you got to think about what you're getting with it, the amount of power output you get, how long it lasts, the ability to have these different accessories on it, the motion detector, pretty cool. You know, you're in camp, an animal walks up, light pops on, it's usually going to scare that animal away, yeah. you know. So there's some nice safety benefits of that. You know, or you get up and your light is outside, you get up to go to the bathroom, the light pops on, you can find your, your toilet hole pretty easily. Yeah, you know, yeah no, like totally. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing, you know, price-wise, it's like, oh, 225 for a light, like, are you serious? <laughs> a lot of the cost is actually in the tripod and the stand. And all of our lights come with tripods and stands. Get the bugs up out of your face, get the light out of your eyes. But you know, what you're paying for is, you know, not only the light, the light's a light, you can get a light for 50 bucks or whatever, but it's really the stand, it's the whole experience of getting it up above and you. Now, how high does this one go? Yeah, so the new 2000 will go up to 10 feet. And the other one was? 1200 goes to nine feet and then eight feet on the 800. Okay, so having that thing way up with the, the angles that these lights are, it puts out a big yeah. section of light. I mean, we're talking like 60 feet yeah. easily. Yep. So you can light up a big, big campsite with just one light. You don't Absolutely. need three or four of them around. Nope. One's gonna do the job where a cheaper one, you might need a couple of them. So, totally. you know, if you're trying to cover that big of an area, again, price-wise, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying out the 2000, looking forward to it. I love the 1200, we use it all the time. So, thanks, appreciate your time. Oh, likewise. Yeah. No, thanks for stopping by. Check them out, where's the best place to find it? Yeah, devosoutdoor.com. And again, I'm Colin with Devos. Yeah, check us out. Affiliate links below. Hello! Cheer them on! Oh, he's gonna go backwards. Oh! 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 First, first two in the water! Go! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> right now we are over at Anchor Solex and if you watch my channel you know that I have the C1000 super nice power supply love that thing but it's a little big for some applications and what I saw over here you got some tiny little guys yeah tell us about these Oh, actually, this is our 521, and it's very super for a weekend trip. And the output is, um, you need... Uh, so it's uh, 320 watt hours, mm -hmm. okay, with a total output of 300 watts. You've got two AC ports, uh, cigarette lighter style port, uh, USB-C, uh, H or IQ port, and two USB-A ports, and, and a light. So something like this is gonna be really good for, uh, you know, the LED lights on your, your rooftop tent or a CPAP machine, you know, maybe not powering a big refrigerator for a weekend, not enough juice for that, but for a lot of those other power needs, recharging some camera batteries, stuff like that, this could be a really nice option. But you have something even smaller than that, and that's this guy right here. So this has a built-in lantern Talk about an awesome camping power supply. This thing is fantastic. I love this little pop-up here. No AC ports on this one. Doesn't really need them for that. Again, you got a cigarette lighter port, uh, two USB A's, a C. Is this another? Uh, so a, a, a solar panel input. Oh, oh more USB C's down here. Yeah. Super nice. A uh, nice compact form factor. And this one is about 312 watt hours. Yes. So really handy. Again, CPAP machine, your LED lights, some basic recharging, keeping your phone charged, stuff like that. This would be a great option if you don't need a big power supply. This could be an awesome camping addition for you keep all that stuff powered on i love the built-in lantern i think that it's the coolest feature right here uh what do you think of this i think it's just you like it, it? yeah for sure and it, i think it's just an alternative to some big guys because for the big guys you need to it, it's hard for you to carry it <laughs> with you and you have to keep it in the car or in the truck but with this small guy you can just carry it and if you need to go somewhere when you're camping like to do a fishing is near a lake, that's a 
that, that's a choice for that. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic. Do you know the price point on this? Uh, the price for now is uh, $1.99. Oh, that's not bad at all. So mm -hmm. right at 200 bucks. This could be a fantastic option for a lot of people with the different USB ports, the DC port, and being able to charge those types of devices. I get for me, I use a CPAP machine every night. I don't want to have to lug a monstrous 20 pound power supply with me for an overnight camping trip. This would be absolutely perfect. For sure. All right. Thank you, Jasmine. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. Check them out. Anchor Solex. Links in the description below. You'll find it easily. This could be a great option for people. Well, that's going to wrap up our coverage of the first ever Overland of America. This was a great event and it's more community and event focused than most expos. It's not just a selling show. There's tons of trails here. There's the film festival, there's the Barbie races, there's a pool party. It's, it's about bringing the community together to just have a great time and have some fun. And it was a lot of fun. We got to see some, some cool vendors here. And what I want you to know is coming up are going to be a series of videos that I think you might be interested in. There's interviews with Caleb Baker from Baker Overland, Tyler and Natalia from Independence Overland, Matt and Kara from Ozark Overland Adventures. So look forward for those. Uh, be sure and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of those. And a huge shout out and thank you to Quiet Cat for loaning me this beautiful Lynx bike. This has been a lifesaver running around here because it's been hot. It's been 90, 92 degrees during the day. So having an e-bike to ride around this event has really, really been cool. So big thanks out to Quiet Cat for that. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.